The following presentation is brought to you by the Realm Network. You keep saying Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of uh, Vixens Who Rule. And as you know, the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been kind of scanning the United States. We're in the United States uh, right now. We're looking for the next big thing. Uh, when it comes to women's wrestling here in the States, a lot of you have been sending me a request of, of females, vixens in your area that you think are the next big thing. Today we're going to travel to the Midwest where we are going to meet a veteran uh, performer there by the name of Melanie Cruz. Melody, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing all right. Now, Melody, I, you know, I was searching uh, my fan base, looking for suggestions, and uh, your name came up yesterday. This is the first time we're meeting. We've never had the opportunity to speak, uh, but from what I understand, you're kind of ruling the roost over there in the Chicago area in the Midwest. Yes, I am. I'm enjoying it, too. <laughs> now, Melody, I got to ask you this. You, you sent me a short bio. Uh, now, there wasn't much information on this bio, but thank God, like, I'm the Oprah Winfrey of podcasting. That's what a lot of people call me. So I'm going to be able to take that tiny information that you gave me, and we're going to be able to conduct a full interview. The first thing that jumped out on me in the two sentences that you gave me <laughs> Was that now you said the first thing jumped out at me, I saw six foot tall. Are you a legitimate six foot tall? Yes, I am. Okay, so now that tells me, okay, let me let let, let me put on my Oprah hat here. <laughs> I have to believe uh prior to you getting in the wrestling game, at six foot tall and being a uh, a tall woman. I would have to think that you were probably into athletics uh, during your, you know, probably high school years. Correct. I'm going to ba get basketball, oh, go basketball, no doubt basketball. <laughs> right. And, and, and well, first of all, let me, let, let's make it clear. There was nobody bigger than you on the basketball team, I hope. There was one. How big was, was she? She was maybe six. Six foot and a half inch, but oh. she was built. What, she was big, were big you, girl. Were you the star of the team? Of course I was. So so now if you and her were the same height, did you play center or did you play power forward? Um, I mainly played center, but we would kind of team up, switch off. We had different plays for both of us. What Was this high school now or did you did you go on to college from there? Not with basketball. Okay. Basketball was only high school. Okay, now I'm also going to guess, I think I'm safe in saying softball. Nope. No softball. How about a, a goalie in soccer? Nope. Track and field? Yep, there you go. What did you, what did you do in track and field? I threw shot put and discus. Wow. See, I, I, I got to be honest with you, uh, Melanie. I, I'm intrigued now because... You're the first power woman, power vixen we've had on these shows. You know, we've had these, you know, very, you know, very attractive, five foot four, petite, you know, diva looking women. Not the usual. Just, yeah, the usual. But see, now this, this immediately piques my interest because now you are a, a different kind of professional wrestler. So I'm a very different kind. Ve beautiful. Hey, you know what? I, uh, it's funny, I've had a couple of people, you probably are too young to remember this, but do you remember the old show, Glow? Yes, I do. I've had a couple of the Glow Girls on this show, and I mean, all yeah, all those Glow Girls were like real women wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were. So now you had to be influenced, I would think, from a whole different type of female role model in wrestling. Is that correct? I actually did not know anything about wrestling. Wait, Mel oh, Melody, say that again. Cause, say that again because say that again because you broke up a little bit. 
I actually did not know anything about women's wrestling before I started wrestling. So basically somebody saw you and said you'd make a great women's wrestler. Um, my brother kind of did indie stuff. I went to shows and I fell in love with it. Um, a lot of old school guys trained me. I never really wrestled girls for the first couple, like I want to say year and a half. I never wrestled a girl. So it took some time. Would we know some of these old school guys that trained you? Um, Midwest guys, Rough Crossing, Scott Spade, Jimmy Blaze. Okay. Indie guys. And this is all in the Midwest Chicago area? Yep. So, so they more or less approached you or were you around it, around your brother, and you kind of got intrigued by it? I was very intrigued by it because the first time I saw an indie wrestling show, I didn't even know it existed <laughs> until I went, went I want to say, a year before I started wrestling. Um, it was just crazy. Now, now were, there girl, were there girls on that card, on that show that you saw? There was just a girl that walked out. I think it was a wife of one of the wrestlers, dressed up, all divish, and never wrestled, didn't do anything, clapped her hands, <laughs> shaked her ass. Now, when you started training then, were there other girls training with you as well? So you were the only girl amongst all the guys. Yep. Well, I find that odd. How come no other females were going to the school? It, a girl came in a little bit before that. She stopped. And then I want to say about two years in is when we got two more girls. Wow. So this whole time you're basically training with guys. Yes. And, and listen, I know the guys wrestling and I know especially when it comes to training, uh, there's probably, it's probably fair for me to say they weren't taking it easy on you. No, they weren't. But the thing is, when I signed a contract <laughs> with the training, I actually asked to be treated like one of the guys. I wanted to, I fell in love with men's wrestling. I didn't know much about girls. So I wanted to be trained that way. Well, now let, let, let's talk about it, though. So that training had to be extremely difficult for you, especially if you weren't in the ring with other women. You were literally in the ring with guys. I mean... I would have to think that you would go home battered and bruised a couple of days a week. Oh, yeah. Oh, every day. Um, we had practices three times a week and then Saturday, Sunday around shows. But I was bigger than most of the guys <laughs> at training. So, I mean, there was only two guys that were bigger than me. So it wasn't like I felt like I was wrestling girls because they were smaller. <laughs> But, but Melody, okay, so let, let me ask you this now. You said it was a couple of years till some other girls came along, right? Mm -hmm. but, but had you started already working shows? Yes. Um, my first singles match was actually with Sarah Del Rey. Oh, okay. She's tremendous. Yes. Um, I did a few tag matches, like I said, with like other wives that have been in the business for a while. But it wasn't an actual match. The guys did most of the stuff. But my first actual match, yeah, was with Sarah. And so I learned really quick. I'm like, damn, this is what women's wrestling is? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah oh my. Well, that, that must have been tough for you, though, because here you are used to training with all these guys. I'm sure a lot of it, especially six foot your size, a lot of it is a power and, and, and ground game. And then, you know, you wrestle somebody like Sarah. Her style is completely different. How did that first match go? It actually it went way better than I ever thought it was going to go, <laughs> but um, she really helped me a lot. It was definitely a different experience. Like this girl doesn't hit like these guys have hit me <laughs> for the last like year of training. But it was definitely a great experience because it opened my eyes that hey, I need to learn more about these women because <laughs> that's who I need to be wrestling. So now, now let me ask you this. So um, now once you start training and once you start working, I'm sure now uh, you're following the sport on TV. Are there any knockouts, divas, or anybody else that you're kind of drawn to that maybe now you're starting to look at their style a little bit and copying it? Not so much copying. I mean, I'm, I'm one of the only girls that are my size. There's a couple other girls in the in the whole wrestling business that are my size. Um, I try to take from the guys with that part. But the only girl that I love the way she does everything is Paige. 
Her mother taught her so well. I'm really close with her mom. Her mom actually helped me with like my character and shimmer and everything. Oh, so do you know I had the uh, I had the uh, entire family on my show. I fell in love with the oh. entire family. That's amazing. So and and and, and she, even though she's not as tall as you, the, her mother. Uh, how do you pronounce her first name again? Soraya. Soraya. Her style is probably a lot like yours. It's very unique. She's a, um, she has more, I feel like, passion. She's owned her character so well now. That's what I want to get to. Well, now, I would think, though, Melanie, that she had to also, aside from the wrestling, I would also think that Soraya had to teach you a lot about character as well. Absolutely. Well, so, so how, how long did you get to work with her at Shimmer? Um, I'm, we're still working together. We'll, we haven't actually had like matches and everything, but breaks down everything. She's definitely my mentor in women's wrestling. Um, I've been at Shimmer for five years, so I want to say about four and a half. Her, her and Brittany or Paige came to Shimmer, I want to say like two shows after I did, so a year now, I, I always do this, and pardon me, I always get Shimmer and Shine confused, and they need to get, they need to name them something differently so I don't get confused. But now, since you're in Chicago, I'm thinking Shine's in Florida, Shimmer's in Chicago. Correct. Okay. So, okay, man, this is fascinating. I had no idea that you were trained by her so, so that you, and that you work with her. D give me some of the things, though, that she taught you about the business. Give me some insights that maybe you didn't know before, and all of a sudden it opened up your eyes a little bit. It's mainly this, like, what you're doing in a match. It's more paying attention to the crowd and working off the crowd. It's before I met her, I was just doing a set of moves. Like, I had a s certain moves I wanted to do in every match. But she said, hey, how about you not do this move? You do this variation of it. And then do stuff with the crowd. So it was, it, the way she said stuff kind of hit me different. Because like I said, I've been with guys. Like, guys don't know how to talk to girls or get through our thick skulls. Right. So I'm hearing it from someone who was, so, she owned her craft so well. That it was, it definitely opened my eyes with like doing stuff different in a women's perspective. Yeah. So I guess a lot of it, really, what you're talking about is the psychology. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Was, now, 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 tell me a little bit about your character or your gimmick, so I could get to know the character a little better. Just a bitch. <laughs> um, very powerful, powerful moves, but also ground. Like you said, ground. I'm um, someone who just wants. The wrestle, I don't care who it is. Um, I've been in there with a lot of girls, a lot of high-flying girls. It's crazy, but my character is mainly just focused on killing her opponent. <laughs> well, how, how difficult is it though for you? You you know when 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 you're not in when you're in there with the high flyer. I mean, you know, a lot of girls aren't in the mold that you're in. And I, I, how difficult is that for you because I would have to think there's a great deal of adjusting that you have to do and that that leaves it open for injury, I would have to think. I definitely get hurt more in the ring with the girls than I do with the guys because I have, I want to say 80% of my matches still today are with the men. It's just, like, it's a lot safer. The stuff that the girls want to do, a little more, like, not so smart. <laughs> a lot of flippity-floppity stuff, and I'm just someone, hey, let's do this one body slam and then go talk crap to the crowd instead of doing, hey, let's do a head scissors off the top rope and into this flip. It's definitely have to adjust, and the girls definitely have to adjust to, to my style, too, because I can't do most of the stuff that they want to do. It's now, now, let me ask you this. You just said it's much easier when you're working with the guys. Do you work indie matches against the guys? Correct. You do? Mm -hmm. how, how is that set up? I mean, is it, is it set up as some kind of a handicap match or really, you know, male versus female? No, I'm just another wrestler on the show. I've held heavyweight championships with the guys. It's we just have to make it believable. 
Like, right. can't have a full-blown match with, with someone who can totally outwork me. You just have to make it look make it look believable. Well, you, you know, Melanie, I have to ask you this, and it can look believable because I've have. Do you watch Lucha Underground? Yes. I'm, I get blown away by by uh, Evilese. I had Evilese on the show a couple of weeks ago, and Sexy Star. They blow me away. A- absolutely blow me away. I mean, the greatest compliment I could give them is when I see them in like an intergender match. By the time the match is over, I forgot there was a female in the match. That they Correct. are that good. But you know, here's the funny thing. I, I gotta be honest with you, and I had made I went to Lucha and I had some conversations down there because I was interested. In the world that I came from, you know, WWE, WCW, even TNA, a lot of guys, and I ninety-five percent of the guys would have never sold for a female. That's why I thought Lucha was phenomenal, especially I remember seeing Chavo uh, and yeah. really selling for these females. I thought it was great, but that's, that's the minority. A lot of guys won't do that. Do you ever have a problem with the guys when you're going over matches and you want them to do something? Is there ever really an issue? The people I'm around, not really. I want to say the opposite percentage. I want to say 85 to 90 percent of the guys are, they want to do more selling than I want them to do. Because at the end of the end of the match, I'm still a girl. They shouldn't be overselling. But I've, I want to say maybe out of 100 matches, I've had problems with maybe two guys. Now so let me now, now, let, now let me ask you this, Melanie. I can see when you're working with the guys, I can see you really laying it in. Because like you said, I, we've got to convince the people that I have a shot to win the match. But do you ever have a problem with your opponents not laying it in because they are guys and they're afraid of hurting you? Yes. Um, usually the first time around with most of the guys, I get really aggravated because I feel it in the ring that it's not where they usually are. Do you, do you it, when that happens? Do you just start beating the crap out of them yeah. so they got to hit you yeah. back? I hit them ten times harder. <laughs> yeah. that, that's fascinating to me. It's but now most of the guys are okay with it. They know how hard I could take a beating. <laughs> Has any guy like have you ever like laid into any guy and he get you in the back and kind of cut a promo on you, asking you what the heck you were doing out there? Well, for the most part, they use. There's only a couple guys that will still rib me in the ring, but I still always get him back. <laughs> See, I, I, I got to tell you, I didn't know that you were this model. And I, I, I love this because this is so unique and you don't see this a lot. Have you ever gone back now that, you know, and you've been doing this for eight years now. You're, you've, you've been doing this for a very long time. Have you ever gone back to, like, watch the, uh, the fabulous Moolahs and the, uh, the, the Medusas and the yeah. Sherry Martells? I, yeah. I mean, I, it, it's, it's amazing. It's, I, want to, I want to bring that back so bad. But there's too much diva. <laughs> yeah, let, 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 let's talk about that for a minute because you you now you bring a completely different element uh, mm-hmm. to females wrestling. And you know what? I got to give TNA credit because, you know, I, I was there when Kong came in for the first time. And Kong was very, very unique. But, you know, you got to keep in mind, you got to have like a great Gail Kim to make Kong look great. But then on top of Kong, they brought in that Havoc, which I was I really liked seeing this because you never saw that brand of wrestling anymore. Correct. Do you ever think we'll see that in the level of the WWE? I think they'll do one more run with something different, but the people want TNA. They want tits and ass. Hey, I, but, but, but I'll tell Duck. you... But yeah. it does. But I'll, but I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this, Melody, to be honest with you. I, I'm not a fan of NXT, but I'm a fan of the girls at NXT. And Charlotte and that Sasha uh, Banks. The Banks, yeah. They, they can. No they can, doubt about it. And, and I don't think they care about being divas. And lo- I think they want to be legit female wrestlers. And that, that's where Paige comes from, too. It's just, 
it's good to see that, but they're still pushing a diva on them. Yeah, and and you know you know what concerns me. Rain. Yeah, and you know what concerns me a little bit, like especially Paige. Listen, she's twenty two years old. Uh, in my opinion, far and away the best woman on the roster. Nobody comes close, in my opinion. And it just seems they have a girl like this, and because they have so many divas out of the mold, it seems like they have a legitimate female wrestler, and almost they don't know what to do with her on a creative level. Nope. Look at Natalia. She can work like crazy, and she's managing. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, I gotta ask you this now. Let, let, let's be honest here now. Um, everybody that gets into wrestling, you know, you know, everybody, guys and girls, everybody I talk to, of course, the uh, the big dream is to go to the big show. You know that that's what everybody wants to do. Even though I, I, I'll tell them the big show isn't everything it's cracked up to be. Once you're there, you know, trust me. But you you've got to realize though now, Melanie, that. Just because of the direction that they're in and they've been going in for many, many years, you might not fit the mold. So whether you ever make it to the WWE or not might have absolutely nothing to do with your ability whatsoever. It's just like, you know, they're not looking for that style of wrestling. How how do you deal with that if like that's the ultimate goal? But you know what? No matter how good I am, I might not have that opportunity because they might not be looking for that. They might not be looking for it today, but they could be looking for it tomorrow. Um, I did the little I did a little security spot with WWE. I was the first female security they had, and they saw me. They know who I am. They saw me in the ring, and they said like. They have nothing, like, they can't do anything with the girls right now because they have so many storylines. And I looked at the guy and I said, it's okay if it's, if I'm not what you're looking for right now. He's like, today we're not, but tomorrow we might. Now, I had a long time. Now, what did you do as a female security guard there? I just did a little skit with um, Mercury and Noble, I want to say about a month and a half ago. What happened? Just said, yes, sir. <laughs> That to me seems like it would be a great gimmick for you right there. It would have been, but I was in so many storylines with all the companies I was in. They just didn't really care. Now, now when when you go to a WWE, because I'm just curious, because I know a lot has changed, uh, you know, since I was there. Yeah. When you walk in, obviously all eyes have to be drawn to you just because you're unique and different. You see, that's the thing I love. I love unique and different because unique and different is going to stand out. Now, when, when they have you there, even uh, you know, to be a security guard, even in a very little role, do, do, do you catch somebody's eye? Do they pull you aside and start learning a little bit about you? Or is it just too busy and so much chaos that even somebody like you doesn't stop them in their tracks? Not really. There's so much crap going on there. Everyone's running around. And now, like with the Rosebud thing, that's what I actually went there to do. And then um, Road Dog pulled me out because he saw I was the biggest girl to go do security. Um, all the extras are kind of in one corner. I mean, if, if you know a couple of the workers, you talk to them, but you stay out of their way. Yeah. We're told to sit in, ca in the cafeteria. Just <laughs> God, that, 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 to me, that's such a shame because sometimes you have things right in front of you and you're all over the place and you're too busy to really see what's there. That, that's the thing that really like, you know, from a, from a talent's perspective, uh, you know, the one thing that was difficult and I always used to have to explain to a lot of the talent is a lot of the wrestling business really doesn't depend on how good you are. A, a lot of it really depends on being in the right place at the right time. And I hate to say this, Melanie, but it's the truth. A lot of it depends on knowing somebody. And, and everything's about knowing someone. Yeah, and, and that, 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 that to me is unfortunate because there's great people out there who just, you know, unfortunately don't know somebody. It is. It's really, it's, 
it's crazy when I see it. Yeah. Like, I only went to WWE and did the extra spots because I knew someone. Yeah. So that now, I see now, it everywhere. Now, let me ask you this, though, Melody. You're not... You're not banking all your success on making it to the WWE, are you? No. Okay. Now, I was reading and I like, because I think this is a great fit, and you seem to have a great experience. You just went to Japan a couple of months ago. Yes. How did that happen? Uh, through Shimmer. Uh, I wrestled a couple of girls that they brought in from Japan, and I got, they asked me if I wanted to go. I was like, uh, yes. <laughs> they said, you're. You're a very big girl. <laughs> many, many people like you. And I was like, no, they won't like me. I'm mean. <laughs> so, but, but see, they're smart over there in, in, in Japan, and I'm sure that's how they booked you, though, right? Yes. And were you booked as just the big female heel and throwing a lot of the smaller girls around? For the most part, I was initially just brought in to be the first foreigner this company brought in. And... When I got there, I did a couple matches, and they said, baby, baby. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> I'm me. And then I finally wrestled one of the girls that um, have been to America, been in Shimmer, and know the American crowd. And the promoter said, American match. So when I showed her what I really, like, what I do, they were amazed and baffled. Like, I actually, the crowd, the wrestling crowd, they sit on their hands their entire match. They clap when, I think... Pins and the finish. And by the end of my tour, I finally had people yelling mean things to me. I didn't know what they meant. Right, 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 right. <laughs> they were finally into the show. It wasn't so much a show. They were trying to they were trying to pull off a fight, but it wasn't they know it's it's not really a fight because they're hugging after the matches, shaking hands. There was no characters. And that's what I think they took from me. The promoter was really happy to see someone with a different character come in and wrestle, but still keep the character. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I, I would think that you'll be going there. You'll be going back there sometime soon. Yes, I will. <laughs> now, Melanie, let me ask you a question. I'm curious about this. Like I said, listen, I, you know, I wrote, uh, you know, for a very long time, created characters for a very long time. So, like, see, that to me, when I see somebody like you, it immediately jumps off the page. This is different. This is unique. You know, with the right character, you know, we, we can really make this thing work, right? Mm -hmm. But if, if, if you were asked to, like, totally change, you know what I'm saying? And listen, you know... You know, wrestling in 2015, they're, they're divas now. We need you to be a diva. And I hate to say this, but please, because I would never ask you to do this, but, you know, you need to dye your hair. You need to uh, go on a diet. You need to do, you need to change to fit the mold. Would you do that in order to make it? Or would that, like, you not, would you not be comfortable in your own skin? Because that's not who you are. I am who I am regardless of my hair color or how big my waist is, but if it makes sense, yes. If it makes money, if they truly believe in it, yes. I don't have a problem with changing my hair color. I'd die without black hair, but <laughs> I'd make it work. Yeah. It's, it has to be right. It can't just be like, hey, let's try this. I don't, no one's probably going to like it, but let's try it. No, I'm not going to do it for that reason, but... Money, reasons, like it all has to, it has to be worth it. Yeah, now, now, Melanie, let me ask you this. Like, when you you have, like, the WWE now, you have, you know, TNA, uh, you know, now Ring of Honor's, you know, starting on Destination America. So that's another outlet. So, I mean, you got, they, you got Lucha. I mean, there, there are places to work, okay? Right. Somebody oh, like you, I, I'm, I'm just curious uh, with this. Like, what do you do? to try to get hired by these places? How, how do you promote yourself? How, I mean, obviously you've been working for eight years, so I would think you're, you're at the top of your game as a worker. You're unique, you're size, you're different, you bring something different to the table that's not there. So now how do you let everybody know, hey, I'm out here, hire me? What do you do now? Because I would think, like, this obviously is the most difficult part. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, it's mainly who you know. Um, I've messaged almost every company. I'm sure they get a lot of requ uh, messages and everything with, like, pictures, video links, all that. Um, most of the people don't say anything or get back to me unless I say, hey, this person works over there. I ask them, like, hey, say something to them. Like, I've sent my stuff in, all this, and then I get a response back. It all comes back down to who you know. Um, I'm finally Global Force, Jeff Jarrett saying, I'm going to be doing one of their baseball things. I sent him stuff in when they were first starting to talk about the company. Nothing happened, nothing happened. And then a promoter out of Wisconsin is good friends with him. He mentioned it, and now I'm on one of the baseball shows. Oh, that's good. So are you on one of them or a couple of them or what? As of right now, just one. Which show is that? It's in Wisconsin, uh, Appleton. Do you know when it is? Yes, I have it written down. And do you know who you're going to be working? No, that I do not. You're not going to be throwing Karen Jarrett around, are you? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want to say July 9th. Is that a date? Yes, July 9th. July 9th. Oh, that's good to hear. What? Well, that's a great start for you to be seen. You know, again, I right. hope you know he has an opportunity. Can I recommend something to you? Absolutely. I would think now. Listen, and I try to tell people this all the time. And this is like this is this is coming from somebody who knows this is an absolute shoot, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody sends their DVDs in, you know, and Correct. there's mountains and mountains of mountains of DVDs. And believe it or not, we look at those DVDs. I mean, mm -hmm. we really do. I mean, that, that, that's a shoot. I mean, you know, Terry Taylor is a very close friend of mine. You know, he was a, 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 a director of talent development. You know, Bruce Pritchard would always look at the tapes. Uh, you know, Terry's working at the WWE now. So when, when people send those in, they're legitimately looked at. Okay. But here's the deal. Honestly, they're in that machine for about 10 seconds. And if somebody doesn't grab the attention literally in 10 seconds and it's not different and it's not unique and you don't stop dead in your tracks and say, who is that? It just gets thrown back onto the pile. And I would recommend to you, um, mm -hmm. rather than send matches, you know what I mean? I would send like 30 seconds of like every power move you do you know with the impact of the sound effects you know what i'm right. saying i mean really get it edited nicely you know you know power bombing people and right. slow mowing and them hitting the mat and your facials i mean literally 30 seconds so you'll come across as like this this female killing machine because what will happen a lot of times melanie is you know you'll send them a match but you know you know how many minutes into the match before you really get going right so if, if, if something doesn't capture them right away you're never going to have an opportunity so man i would just like i would do a 30 second edit it sound effects maybe black and white black and white to color whatever to really get across the monster because you you are so unique and it really is what the what the wrestling business is missing wow thank you okay. and i i that'll be done very soon it's now, Melanie, let me, let me ask you this. Let's talk about your character a little bit. Okay. Is your character Melanie Cruz? Yes. And, like, if you had to explain your character to me, what is it? <laughs> Powerful. Really? Yes. It's, it's something I'm still having trouble with, um, getting a hold of. Um, Talk to a few people, and they just say, I'm, I'm so unique that I don't need an actual gimmick or character. But what I fell in love with in wrestling was the gimmicks. Mm -hmm. And that's still something to this say that I don't have, but wrestling the guys, I'm my own gimmick. Being the, the six-foot-tall girl who could throw around most of the guys. So it's not... I, I really wish I had a character or gimmick, but... See, you need to, though... I, I, I would suggest the name change. You see what I'm saying? Because everything is like you, you, you have like a window of opportunity. 
So, like, you need everything to grab. Did I lose your, or your picture for you? So, so, in other words, say you send the tape in, right? It's, some, it's something this simple. You send right. a DVD in, Melody Cruz. Who, mm -hmm. Who's Melody? Oh, another girl that wants to be a wrestler. But, again, even the name, if it's something catchy. You All know right. what I'm saying? Well, give me something, like, about your background or about your hobby, hobbies, something that makes you unique or people don't know about you. Not much, no, except the, I went to college also for the shot put and discus. Um, I still try to go out and do that every once in a while when I'm not wrestling. Um, other than that, I, I take care of an 85-year-old woman Monday through Friday and wrestle on Friday night, Saturdays. Um, there's not much else except the wrestling. Do you, are, are you heavy into weights? Not heavy into it, but I, I do it. Yeah. Do Every you, day. Melanie, you mind if I put on my little brain cap? Maybe the rest of the week I could think of something for you. Maybe a little gimmick, maybe a little name, maybe a little something and send it to you. No, I, absolutely, please. Yeah, because, also, I, I, because please. I'm telling you, listen, I'm not there anymore. I do this thing now in my own little house. I got Rocky <laughs> behind me, if you haven't noticed. I do oh, my God. own little thing here. I mind my own business. But um, I know talent when I, when I see talent. And, and I mean, it jumps off the page at me. And sometimes, like I said, because I've been in the system and I know that you could be missing that one little thing where like you, you could slap yourself in the head and say, why didn't I think about this eight years ago? You know what right. I'm saying? But sometimes you need somebody on the outside. You say, you, yes. you know, because you're so close to it. You know what I mean? I mean, you're doing this. You know who you are. Sometimes you need a different perspective. Somebody from the outside saying, why isn't she doing this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. <laughs> Can I, if I put Melanie Cruz and stuff, I could see the matches and everything on YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. You'll see a little bit older stuff, but you'll see most of it. Because I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a look at it. I'm going to send you some ideas. But I'm telling you, it's just, it's those little things. You just got to make somebody sit up and notice. Right. Absolutely. But I think Global is a great start. I mean, I'm excited about that. I'm very excited about it. So you said that's July 19th? July 9th? 9th? Yeah, the 9th. And what town is that in again? Appleton. Okay. Have you ever been in touch with anybody at um a TNA? Um, five years ago, five four years ago, I actually had a tryout, but Shimmer weekend was the weekend before, and I got most of my teeth knocked out, all my front teeth, and I had to go to TNA with no teeth. But that should have been awesome. They did not like it. <laughs> oh, my. What? Are you serious? Oh, yeah. my God, bro. If, if, if I see a six-foot woman with no teeth that got her teeth bashed down her throat, I, I'm going to think that's tremendous. They just didn't care for it, I guess. Who, who did you work with? Did you work a match there, or you didn't even get a match? I got a dark match with Sarita. It was actually the first time, it was five years in, so four years, or three years ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, worked a dark match with Sarita, and it was the first, one of the first times I had to be baby. <laughs> and it was, they said it was an amazing match, and I had so much charisma. And I'm like, I, <laughs> like, I don't even know how to act as a baby, because my entire career I've been, in, I've been a heel. Yeah. And it who, was definitely. A, who, who was the agent for the match? I'm just curious. Pat? There wasn't one person because. So much happened. We actually had the match after the show, like in front of the crowd. It was most of the, the guys talked to me. Yeah. It wasn't, um, I want to say like Hogan, um, Dixie Carter wasn't even there for the weekend. Oh, I, 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 w I would think Hogan must have loved you. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't even watch us because uh, <laughs> it was after the show. Yeah, yeah. Well, they had technical problems. It was a mess. Yeah. Well, Melly, seriously, though, put together that. Do you have somebody that might be able to do some editing for you or I something? Do really good work. Yeah, because I think I can get that in the right hands for you. And, and that's why I said it should, like, 30 seconds, boom, boom, mean face, boom, boom, just devastating, you know, showing who you are. Right. You know? Absolutely. I Thank you so much. Oh, no, 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 no. Because, again, it's like, see, to me, this is what wrestling's missing. 
you know, everybody looks, and I'm going on the soapbox again, everybody looks the same, nobody has any characters anymore. You know, you know why that is, Melanie? And I'll tell you exactly why. The business has shifted to all this high-flying, right? Mm -hmm. And the problem is everybody is so focused on, on memorizing every move in every match that the first thing they throw away when they get in the ring is the character. They forget all about the character because they have to remember all these spots. So what happens is that makes every single person the same. Yes. Uh, I I've, I've noticed that people have to get their their stuff in. Exactly. That's all it's about now. And, and and their stuff doesn't mean anything because everybody can wrestle. Everybody can wrestle, but it's what's going to make you different. Correct. Yeah. Well, Melody, I'm glad that we I'm glad I was introduced to you from the fan base. Uh I'm a, I, I'm a I really I enjoyed this because you you are a character you're a throwback I'm all about old school and you uh, you, you got something you got something to offer I'm gonna look at some of your uh, videos I'm gonna think about uh, maybe a little bit of a character I'll keep in touch with you through email absolutely please do oh I definitely will and, and I'll have you on again on the show we'll talk about your progress and and how everything's working out. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem, Melody. It's Listen. been an honor. Thank oh, no, you. an honor for me, too. And the best of luck with Global Force on July 9th. And, you know, hopefully out there at the baseball field, a lot of people will get to see your work, and that will lead into the next big thing. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Melanie Cruz, everybody, and we'll be back here next week. The preceding presentation was brought to you by The Realm Network.